What's up everybody, welcome back, this is Forgo. And a lot of times when we get these characters, especially waifus like Rogue, we expect a tremendous amount for them, right? That's kind of a big thing for a lot of us players. I mean, this is a character for me that I had a crush on when I was a little kid watching the X-Men cartoon. Every time she wouldn't show up on an episode, I would be disappointed and even a little upset because I didn't see my girl. That's how far back Rogue goes for someone like me. So I think maybe my expectations were very, very high when I got her. But a lot of times when I test characters, I really want to see how well they can play with a proc. And Rogue can play damn well with a proc. She can, but I got to tell you guys, if you don't have any pierce on your cards, the rage is the way to go. Or a CTP of Judgment. I don't have one of those lying around, unfortunately. But I did have a CTP of Rage in my inventory, so I went ahead and equipped that on her. And I got to tell you guys, with this thing and properly built, she's so much better and so much stronger. Still isn't what she should be because of what I just previously mentioned. I still want her to be stronger because it's waifu, it's rogue. But she is damn strong, guys. I mean, there are players that are doing insane clears with her as long as they have a lot of pierce. And if you have CTP of Judgment, which actually synergizes really well with her kit, it's going to give her the all attack and the chain hit damage. And we all know that chain hit damage synergizes very well with Pierce. So if you do have Pierce in your cars and you get a CTP of Judgment, that might actually even be better than a Rage. And I've already got confirmation from other players that have a CTP of Energy. And they have, you know, 6% Pierce on their cars. And they're doing pretty well with her. They're very, very happy with her. You know, I just don't have Pierce on my cars. So unfortunately... The rage is the real way to make her shine. And that's really because of the way her procs work. So, for example, when you go into the previous skills here, something I figured about Rogue, especially as far as doing some really good damage, not only does the rage get buffed up from her passive, but if you start off with the four, you do your immunity, right? And you apply your all defense down. And this is the thing about playing with the rage. With the rage, I'm not worried about engaging the proc. With a proc you know you're trying to you know we do this here and then we just hit the five and land the proc and it works out really really well but with a rage it's a little bit different you know you start off with the four you back away then hit your damage accumulation then hit the five right and then get that nice bit of lightning at the end then you'll go into your two and your one and the thing also with the rage is because the or a ctp of judgment because the proc stays engaged you can actually do quite a bit of damage with your second and first skill also you can incorporate all your skills, and a big thing that I noticed is in the rotation, it's just four, back away, three, five, bring the lightning down to one, and then you're gonna go three, or I'm sorry, you'll do four, three, five, and as soon as the lightning comes down, boom, hit your tier three, and you will notice an insane spike of damage right when at the end of the fifth skill when the lightning comes down and you start off with your tier three oh my god she will put it out this is kind of a disadvantage of playing with a proc it's very difficult to do something like that with a proc because skills are always engaged the proc's probably going to trigger in places you don't want it to trigger whereas with the rage or ctp of judgment you just don't have to worry about it and i did give rogue a lot more love since the last video because i wanted to give her a full shot a full chance to show what she's really capable of and right now she has 29,300 physical attack she has 128 attack speed max everything else crit rate critical damage ignore defense max skill cooldown but she does have 71 percent dodge so not quite max dodge as far as her urus i also Buff these up. Now she has Mythic Physical Attack Urus. And I did put some Dodge Urus in here to help bump up her Dodge. And we've already talked about all of her skills. She has a Fully Awakened Power of Angry Hawk set. So I put a lot of love into this girl. Of course, the CTP of Rage. And then we have a Legendary Uniform. I can't upgrade it anymore because I need more Biles. I will be farming for these things. But I did get it up to Legendary. And as far as the Uniform options, kind of... Like, this option isn't bad. A lot of people probably have this at Mythic. I'm not a real highly pvp focused player so i never really worried about it but now i'm kind of regretting to be honest i'll probably end up leveling this uniform up a little bit but the runs you're going to see is with this current build my physical attack unluckily it's maxed out from spider-man's mythic uniform here 
And then we get in a little ignore defense from Storm. This is a good uniform to level up as well. And then we have Odin. This is a good uniform to level up. However, on an emulator, Odin always caused my game to crash, so I never really used him. But he really is an insane character, and he really is worth leveling up if you do have the resources. So we're not going to waste no more time jabbing. Let's get into the action, and let's rock and roll. So for the first run, we're going to be taking on Proxima. And I know a lot of you mentioned that if you use like Nick Fury's leadership, it'll be better than White Fox. I actually tested that and I, the damage was pretty close to the same. I actually I was getting a little bit better at a White Fox. I do have a CTP of Insight on her and that's probably what's making a difference for me in my runs. And we are using Coulson. And one thing about the regular world bosses is you don't have any guaranteed critical rate in her kit. She doesn't have any guaranteed critical rate. Coulson actually is giving some guaranteed critical rate and that really helps the CTP of Rage be more consistent. This is a criticism that I've had about that obelisk for a long, long time. And one of the reasons I can't stand it, you know, because a lot of times if it's on a character that doesn't do a lot of hits or they don't have guaranteed critical rate, it just doesn't proc as often as you'd like it to or doesn't proc when you want it to. However, with Coulson here, this thing procs pretty much on the money. And one thing about the Rage that I can always give, or CTP of Judgment, which I actually want to put the CTP of Judgment on her instead just because i think that it's more consistent with proccing no matter where you're fighting because against cole or against null you're not going to be able to use colson there's no awakened characters that offer guaranteed critical rate yet or any characters from their passive or whatsoever but look at her guys i mean you know we're just we're over a minute right we're already down to the 10th bar i mean she's pretty much destroying this thing right now and i'm telling you Watch what I do here in this next this next rotation. We'll hit that four. We're gonna hit the three, five. We're gonna let the five finish out. Lightning's gonna come down, and then I'm gonna hit that tier three, and she will just start smacking down some damage, man. That wasn't a real good one. We must not got our critical hit proc, or critical damage proc. I'm gonna run around, run around, and you really want to make sure that when she do the four, she kind of flips backward and then go into your three, five. And we're just trying to avoid this purple. Get away, get away, get away, get away. And the thing is, guys, like, this is really good. I mean, stage 99 is no joke. Even in regular world bosses, even in this day and age in the game, the fact that, you know, we do all want to fight and all, stage 99 still is really, really amazing, especially without doing any cheekiness. And something I want to throw out there, guys, if you're playing with Rogue, use Thor as a striker. He has lightning resistance down, and even though a striker, the duration doesn't last as long, depending on your resist level, he helps so much. He helps so much. I saw a stark, actually quite a bit of difference, using him as a striker for Rogue, because her fist skill and her tier 3 do lightning damage, and those are her main damaging skills. I mean, she does good damage on her other skills, but the 5 and the tier 3 is really the money makers for her. Come on, bring it, bring it. And this was not very difficult. This took me about three tries, you know, and I do have 55% physical attack on my cards. You know, and I, you know, a lot of times, you know, I was mentioning earlier about how we expect certain characters to be super strong. You know, we set our expectations so high that it's re we're really almost setting ourselves up for disappointment. And I think sometimes that's what happens, and I think that's really what happened with a character like Rogue. There's so much love for this character that we all want her to be so strong. I mean, you know, I want her to be like a top meta character, and, well, she just isn't. She isn't a top meta character. For squad battle, yes, right? For squad battle, she's going to be the meta, but I don't really put squad battle in that higher regard uh, because, I mean, honestly, guys, so far I just play on auto all the time. And I still remain in vibranium. So maybe people aren't really trying that hard. Maybe they don't care. Maybe everybody else is playing on auto. I don't really know. But I just, I always just play on auto and remain there with the characters that I have. Now we'll see over time what happens. If maybe Rogue will make that much of a difference. But I mean, if you want, you know, a super awesome character for it, and I think the best character for her, for the Mutant Day would be her oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah now this is taking a while you know proxima's being a little bit fussy throwing out the purple and every time we throw out the purple we gotta run away and something i mentioned in the last video that i was definitely wrong about 
is I said that Rogue is fragile, and, and she is fragile, but she has a lot of great survivability because of the iframes, because of the immunity, and because of her heal from her uniform effect. She really does have a lot of survivability and can really come off as tanky, but if that heal is on cooldown, uh, she can get one-shotted. But the thing is, I mean, she plays... because well, Every time you're in an iframe, Proxima's just kind of standing there with her thumb up her butt, and she isn't doing anything. Now, come on, we almost got it, we almost got it, we almost got it. We almost got it. Come on, we can do it, we can do it, we can do it. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh my god, oh my god, we can do it, we can do it, we can do it. Oh my lord. So we got down. This took the entire five minute run, which is crazy. But let's move on to the next one. So now we're going to take on stage 99 Corvus, the exact same team. I do have four ignore dodge strikers, and I do have Rachel, uh, just to kind of mind control Corvus a little bit, because Rogue's poor skill sometimes can get interrupted and can miss. So you got to be careful of that, but because she's a speed character, she takes no... She doesn't get penalized uh, in any way. You know, if they're a universal combat or a blast character, they have a 50% damage reduction against Corvus, whereas speed don't. They do the maximum amount of damage against this guy, which is generally why speed characters are usually the best for Corvus. And Rogue is no exception to that rule. She can absolutely murder this dude. Come on, come on. And I'm actually really curious, honestly, whenever I do craft my cards, my opinions might change a lot on a lot of different characters. Because I definitely, I see all these comments about certain characters like, oh, well, my character can do this and this and go this high against Null and all this. And it's like, well, that's awesome. But, you know, I can't because I don't have any peers on my cards. So until I do get peers, I just don't know, like, how strong characters are with that. But the, the good thing about what I have right now and with my setup is every player that doesn't have peers, they actually get an accurate representation of how strong characters can actually be. You know, with 55% physical attack, at least, for a physical attacking character like Rogue. Which isn't a lot of physical attack, but it's a, it's a decent amount. It's not bad. Could be better, that's for sure. Come on, come on, girl. Come on. And generally, if you finish this first phase in the first two minutes, you're pretty much on pace uh, to beat it. Oh, yeah. So, we finished it in a minute and 40 seconds. Not bad. And by the way, guys, this was one try. One try. That's how awesome she is. I just came in here, attempted this one time, and I actually already got the clear. Ooh. Ooh. Watch out, watch out. Okay, run over here. Let's get him. And again, three, five, and we're going to let the lightning come down, and then we're going to hit the tier three. And, man, it's just, oh, look at her. So sweet, so sweet. Now there I missed my three. He was a little far away, so I couldn't quite hit my third skill. Peck her head. We'll get it now, though. Ooh. And one thing about her tier three that's really nice is that it does have ignore iframe. So anytime Corvus is going into an iframe or any kind of world boss that you have and you have your tier three ready, you can hit your tier three and make sure you're still doing damage. You do got to be a little bit careful about whenever Corvus is throwing out the purple. I mean, there are times you can die. Say I hit my tier three. I mean, you can die, but I, you can you can tank you can tank quite a bit with her heals. I mean, she can withstand some of the attacks if you can get out of there in time. But I'm loving Rogue. I mean, honestly, I, I think she's a terrific character. It's just that I believe you know I know for myself and I know for a lot of other players, we just wanted her to be stronger because we just have such high expectations for our waifu right that's i mean that's what it is that's what it is you know every time we have a character that we see that we're just like oh my god i love her so much or i love him so much whatever and they're just they're they're good right like she's really great right but they're just not quite where we want them they're just not quite there right but still damn good still really really strong it's a shame that Without Pierce, you know, to really make her shine, you're going to need a Rage or a CTP of Judgment. But I really think if you don't have Pierce, more than likely, the Rage might be better, to be honest. Except that the Judgment will give you more consistent procs. 
The judgment works in a completely different way versus the rage. It actually procs, you have a 10% chance of procking when you're attacking. Whereas the rage actually procs when you're doing critical hits. Uh, it's a totally different mechanic, which is why it's usually much more consistent. And look at that. Corvus is an eye frame, no big deal. We hit our tier three and we're going to get him. Oh yeah. Boom shakalaka. 44 seconds left to spare. Hail to the yes. So that's 299 clears. Now let's move on to the big boy. So in the last video, when using a CTP of energy and just having a stage six ISO 8 set and a five star physical attack Urus, a normal ranked uniform, we couldn't even do stage two with Valkyrie on the team. I mean, we probably could have if I had practiced enough, but just coming here off the fly, I just couldn't do it. This is stage five with Magneto in the leadership and Valkyrie as the support. So we got a hell of a team. And in all honesty, guys, she does do lightning damage on her fist skill and her tier three. You could put Beta Ray Bill in here. I'm actually, I didn't even try that to see if Beta Ray Bill would actually be a better leadership than Magneto. But Magneto is going to bump up all of her skills because he's giving 45% attack to mutants. And she freaking just melts through this. I mean, seriously, like you, whenever I hit that five and then that tier three, look at how much damage she does. And I mentioned this in the last video, something that's really nice about her is, you know, she goes in that iframe in the fifth skill, so when the binds are slapping down and hitting on her, she completes the avoids them. Now watch this, the lightning's going to hit down, we hit the tier three, not bad. The symbiote's got a hold of me right when I hit the tier three, so we didn't get quite the damage we wanted. And another nice thing about Rogue is, this, with the rage, is you can play very reckless, you can go full force. Uh, you're not really worried about anything, to be perfectly honest. Even her fist skill just does a lot of damage. I mean, seriously, this is a character that... I mean, look at all the damage we just did. This is a character that you really need to put a lot into for her to really shine. And just to give you guys a little bit of a comparison, I did a video a while back with Gambit using a CTP of energy, a stage 6 Power Ranger Hawk set, and a normal rank uniform, a complete solo for stage 4. This is only one stage higher, and there is a pretty big difference in the amount of damage you need to do to Null to take him out from stage 4 to stage 5. But honestly, you know, when you see a character like Gambit that could do stage 4 complete solo with the CTP of energy with a subpar build, and then, you know, I have to bring in Rogue and use Magneto and Valkyrie, it does kind of shed some light on how strong she really is. She is strong for sure. And in some ways, I think she's more fun than Gambit because Gambit's kind of one-dimensional. I mean, not, not, not to crap on Gambit. He's my boy, but he is kind of one-dimensional. You know, you just hit the 3-5 or you hit the 3 awaken skill in the 5. Whereas with Rogue, you're just running through your skills over and over and over. And you got all these beautiful animations going on. She's just a really fun, beautiful character to play. And that's not my bias talking. That's just how I actually feel about playing with the character. She's a lot more fun with the Rage, that's for damn sure. I can tell you that uh, I was having a blast doing this. Come on. Now, one thing here you got to be real careful is Null can actually interrupt your force skill like you just did there. And that can hurt your damage. Sometimes it's better just to let him swipe his sword a little bit and kind of get around him. But no, no, not a big deal. She'll still tear it up. And he interrupted our force skill again there, that bastard. Oh, get away, get away. And also, Rogue just has really good movement speed. I mean, she's just one of those characters that's really strong, right? A really strong character. But you're going to have to put some serious love into her. And if you don't have Pierce in your cards, more than likely, you're probably going to want to put a Rage on her or a CTP of Judgment. Because you can see that she can do fairly well. I mean, she could do a solo by herself. If I can do Stage 5 with this team right here, she could do Stage 1 by herself maybe even stage two who knows but i wanted to push her a little bit to show you all what she's capable of at least on my account with 55 percent physical attack and again with no pierce i always want to stress that because i always see these comments where people are like well i did this with her and i did this with her and it's like well that's awesome you know right i mean that's fantastic i salute that but you have pierce you know that makes a big difference it makes a big difference in how much damage you're doing Ooh, you bastard. Come on, I just went ahead and hit my tier 3. I see we're running low on time, so I just kind of push the envelope a little bit. Oh, God, and it, really all the damage she does. 
Like if you catch the light, lightning at the end of the fifth skill and in the beginning of tier three, she'll do a great amount of damage. And then at the end of the tier three, as long as you let it play out and you don't cancel it, she'll do some great damage, guys. Seriously. Now our tier three does have invincibility. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure we get our damage accumulation. We're gonna get the five to get the attack buff. And then we're just gonna hit the tier three. Sometimes when you hit the four skills, he'll kind of throw you back and it's kind of difficult to go into your other skills. I got a little worried there, so I went ahead and backed off a second ago. But no big deal. We'll get it done. We'll get it done. Come on, girl. Come on. Come on. Ooh, lightning's going to strike down. Tier three. Yeah, 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 yeah. And here we go. Melton. Three seconds left. Stage Five. And I actually do wonder if putting Beta Ray Bill would have been better. That's something I might be testing in the future. So all in all, I do have a better opinion about how strong Rogue is. But I mean, unfortunately, if you don't have any kind of pierce on your cards, you really want to have a CTP of Judgment or a CTP of Rage to really get the, the best out of her and get the most out of her. However, if you do have pierce on your cards, a CTP of Energy is going to do really well because of the chain hit damage and she does play really well with a prop and the ctp of judgment would actually probably be the best choice in my opinion let me know in the comments if you guys think a rage would be better so i just wanted to give waifu here a little bit of love and and show that maybe maybe sometimes we get characters that aren't always the strongest but they're still strong and they're still super fun and we just build them and get them because we love them i also stream at twitch every day at reset the link will be in the description below and I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Y'all take care and have a good one.